okay we were talking about the six signs of the second coming and the first four is mentioned in matthew 24 14 if we can have someone read out matthew 24 14 okay so the very first important sign of the second coming is that every people group throughout the world will get to hear the gospel so the gospel will go to every people group however remotely it may be located so somebody at least one missionary would go out to and reach out to every people group that is available you know on this earth so after that the end will come so that's one very clear indication and almost all people groups have been covered uh, and yeah they, they say that some people groups have not heard the gospel at all so uh, that too you know would be covered and then we can be very sure that the end will come uh, the second is regarding the jewish people um if someone could read out romans 11 25 to 26 romans 11 25 to 26 romans 11 25 yeah 25 26 i have brethren that you that you फ्रॉम जेको already it talks about how uh, a time will come uh, it, it says that in your verse 25 um until the full number of the gentiles has come in and in this way all israel will be saved uh, so it's talking about how the god has allowed the jewish people to harden their hearts for a little while so that the entire focus can be upon the gentile nations getting saved but once that is done you know it will once again be israel's turn and god would work in them among them in a special way so that many of them will be will become open to the gospel which is being preached many of them will be reached so uh, we are more familiar with the matthew 24 uh, 14 verse you know which talks about how the gospel will be preached to all the people groups but the other aspect is that even the jewish people will be reached you know in, in a large number in the end times uh, so uh, when both of these things are achieved then we can be very very sure that the end will come uh, just moving on quickly to the other signs you know of the of the second coming uh, matthew 13 7 to 8 if someone could read out <coughs> matthew 13 uh, 7 to 8 13 matthew 13 uh, 7 to 8 yes and some fell among uh, thorns uh, and the thorns okay, so sorry Mark thirteen, totally my fault. Mark thirteen, seven to eight. Yes, Mark thirteen, seven to eight. And when you hear of wars and ro- uh, rumors of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen. Happen, but the end is not it. For nations will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be uh, earth. quacks in various places and there will be famine famines and troubles these are the beginnings of sorrows but yeah. watch out so over here you know uh, in the niv it says these are the beginning of the birth pains uh, so like when a person is you know when a, when a woman is giving birth to a child the very first indication that the child is coming are the birth pains and uh, so in the same way when the end time is almost coming going to be given birth to 
uh, the first thing, the first indication will be the birth pains. And over here, these are the kind of birth pains which the world will begin to experience, indicating that in the very near future, the end times will be given birth to. So what are the indications? Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, earthquakes in various places, famines. This is something that we are literally seeing with our eyes on the you know, news every day. So these are things which are already happening, which means the birth pains have started. The end time is going to be given birth to very, very soon. So this should be a time when we should be even more excited and saying all this that we are getting ready for, all that we are spiritually preparing ourselves for, this rule and reign that we are going to have with the Lord Jesus, it's all coming. It's all becoming nearer and nearer. This should make us more excited about preparing ourselves. And also, it should make us, you know, um, enthusiastic about sharing the gospel. Because we, the, it's, the, it's the Lord's desire that everyone should, you know, be joined into the fold, into his sheepfold. So we are the ones who should go out and bring people into the sheepfold of Christ. Um, maybe we can also look at uh, the next sign, which is Mark 13.22. Mark 13, 22. Mark 13, 22. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and so signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Okay, so this will be a time when you would have a lot of people doing a lot of miraculous things. They will be teaching certain philosophies. They will be coming up with new kinds of teachings. And they back up what they are doing by doing many, many miraculous things. And because they are doing those supernatural things, people will believe them and assume that what they are saying is truthful and correct. But actually, what are they? They are false prophets. They are false teachers. So, And we see a lot of that happening. We see people gaining a greater interest today, you know, in our current day, in supernatural activities. They don't call it witchcraft. But, you know, but that's basically what it is. They are able to perform signs and wonders. And by performing those signs and wonders, they are trying to show that whatever it is that they are saying is actually valid. It's actually truthful. That's, that's, you know, that, that's, that's the way they are portraying themselves to the world. And it says over here, even the elect can get deceived if they are not careful. So it is so important for us to you know, stay alert in these end times and to warn our brothers and sisters and make sure that they also stay safe in the faith. So it's not just enough to know that false teachers are going to be coming in the end times. What are we doing about it? Are we proclaiming the truth and counteracting what the false prophets are saying? Are we taking a stand and protecting our brothers and sisters so that they are not led away? You know, so uh, it's important to understand that even as all these signs are being released, we do have a role to play while these signs are getting released. Um, to look at another one, uh, Mark 13, 24 and 25. If someone could read out Mark 13, 24 and 25. 24 and? Uh, what in those days, <clears throat> after that, tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars of heaven will fall and the powers in heaven will be shaken. Yeah, it says over here, uh, now these are things which have not yet happened. So up to now, whatever we were looking at were all terrestrial phenomena, things which are happening on the earth. But then in the very, very last times, you will even have things happening in the, in the up in the sky where you would have uh, stars behaving differently, where you would have the sun being darkened. So um, you would have uh, other things happening even in the skies. So this, this will be in the very last times. Right now, of course, we seem to be only in the birth pain space. All right. So, but in the very end times, even the uh, stars in the sky and the planets also will be affected. Uh, the last sign, that would be Second Thessalonians 2, 7 to 9. Second Thessalonians 2, 7 to 9. Second Thessalonians 2, 7 to 9. For the mystery of law lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the day, out of the way, and then 
the lawless one will be revealed whom the lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of satan with all power signs and laying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth and they okay, yeah. might uh, so we see over here that when the lawless one is revealed then you really that is when you are literally in the end times uh, the so who is the lawless one over here it's referring to the antichrist and it says very clearly that right now uh, the appearance of the lawlessness uh, lawless one is being held back we see that in verse 7 where it says for the one who now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way so right now the holy spirit is not allowing things to go into that final stage where all these people will rise up who are clearly you know um, representing satan so right now they are being held back by the holy spirit because no, we, the time is not yet for them to you know show themselves fully and uh, uh, operate in authority but a time will come when the holy spirit will step aside and allow that last stage of rebellion to come in and that is basically when even the antichrist will reveal himself and it talks about how he will reveal himself it says in uh, verse 9 he will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie so people will believe his lie people will believe that uh, the true god is not someone to be loved not someone to be admired and respected so in fact if we see in revelation there are passages where it uh, where it talks about how the people you know uh, they will be crying for the for the for the mountains to hide them uh, but at the same time they'll be cursing god because now they have bought into the lie that the, uh, you know in those days it's very difficult to say god doesn't exist because god's um, god's presence will be so real they can literally see judgment coming down from heaven upon earth so god's presence is, is very real so in those days people will not say god does not exist they will say yes god exists but they will be cursing god why because the antichrist would have turned them against god to such an extent that they choose to believe the lie rather than the truth so there are terrible times coming and the church which is being told about these things has a role to play at least maybe through prayer even if you you know if we cannot do anything about future events at least what we can do today is pray that in that day the believers will be able to take a stand and remain strong even though all of that evil is being you know unleashed so we have a role to play in all of this revelation was not just written for our entertainment revelation was written so that we the church will see that this is what is coming next and do whatever we can from our side to prepare our people for it and also uh, you know to prepare ourselves uh, to uh, you know by sharing the gospel and by bringing more people into the kingdom so there's an active role that we are supposed to play even as we are you know learning about all of these events um just to look at some more scriptures regarding the second coming uh, we are aware that you know nobody knows exactly when it will happen uh, acts 17 talks about that it says it is not for you to know the times or dates the father has set by his own authority uh, so uh, it is not for us to know that we have not been given the authority to know about that and uh, jesus says in matthew 24 36 that not even the son knows about when it will happen so even jesus was living here on the earth as a human and he had chosen not to be uh, all knowing so he restricted himself to his human side and he did not know all of the future events so he says at this point of time even the son of god does not know when the when exactly the last hour will be and we have of course first thessalonians 5 verse 2 if someone could read out first thessalonians 5 verse 2 first thessalonians 5 verse 2 for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the lord so comes as a thief in the night yeah so when the thief is coming to your house he does not ring up first and inform you that he will be coming the thief comes unexpectedly when you are not expecting him to come and so the lord in the same way will come like a thief he will it will not be an uh, 
a pre announced arrival so that is why all these people who go on trying to give you know prophecies and predictions of exactly when it will happen they all have been proved false up to now because when god comes none of them will be able to predict nobody will be able to prophesy because he will literally be like a thief in the night he is not going to announce it to one group of christians you know that he is going to come on such and such a day so rather than wasting their time giving prophecies about when the end time will happen maybe they should grow in god and you know use their prophetic gifting to build up the body of christ rather than wasting their time on predictions about when the second coming will happen okay so here it's very very clearly told that nobody will actually know because it will he will come like a thief in the night and another nice thing about the second coming is that it's a very personal thing for believers uh, uh this is what jesus says in john 14:3 john 14 and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you to myself that where i am there you may be also we think about the second coming as all these spectacular things that are happening in the heavens on the earth and the display of power and the angels coming with their trumpets and all of that but actually if you see it's just basically you know your elder brother coming to take you back home so that you can all be under the father's roof together it's such a personal thing you know if god doesn't just say you no know, send us angels and say you know go pick up my people and come yes it is true it talks about how the angels will gather the elect from the four winds yes but you know that that's in the very end when the battle is going to happen but over here jesus is talking about the personal side of it where he says i am going over there now to prepare a place for you and when i come back i'll take you with me over there so it's a very personal thing that we are looking forward to where he is going to come and personally receive us and take us back to be under the father's roof and uh, so we have all these teachings about how there are going to be big mansions over there and how each person is going to have a mansion with a name uh, written on it doesn't really talk about that the word that is used over there you know it's just talking about uh, you know um, mainly about rooms you know i think we had talked about this once earlier they you know in in the biblical times they had this joint family setups so when one of the sons gets married they would build an extra room so that you know he would have his own uh, uh, separate place for his family so they would keep adding on extra rooms to the house which is already there so it's probably jesus was using that kind of an imagery because everyone would want to be under the father's roof no one wants to go and live separately and not be under the father's roof so maybe he meant it in that sense when he said you know i'll go and build up those extra rooms for you so that you guys also can be part of my father's house and we'll all be together as one family so i don't think people will really be interested in the size of their mansion up there in heaven uh, they they would be more interested in being close to the father literally in his presence what does it matter whether you have a mansion with your name written on it or not uh, what matters is that you're under literally under the father's roof in his home in his presence part of his family that would be the beauty of what we have you know we are looking forward to but of course we also know that it will be a glorious thing that will happen matthew 25 verse 31 matthew 25 verse 31 matthew 25 verse 31 uh, when the son of man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him then he will sit on the throne of his glory yeah so this elder brother who is coming to receive us is not just some elder brother this is the king of glory he will come with his angels and he will sit on his glorious throne and we are going to be family members of somebody like that so this is that is the that is the sheer beauty of what we have been given we are just humans and we are not even perfect human beings uh i know but god loves us that much that he has you know raised up our status to that level and so today you know we may not already be with him in glory but we are seated with him in the heavenly realm so god looks upon us uh in a very uh, you know with, with 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 great pride he doesn't look down upon us so how are we behaving in our everyday lives are we living in a way that 
uh, you know, uh, shows our appreciation for what has been given to us. Are we living in a way that honors the position that has been given to us? Because we are people who are seated in the heavenly realm. So are we conducting ourselves like people who belong in that realm? Or are we behaving like as if we belong to the kingdom of darkness, you know, which would be like a real insult, so that we should not be doing that. We should honor God for, for the position that he has given us. Uh, so um, we've had a kind of uh, chaotic first half. Hopefully, our, uh, you know, the second half of our session will be very, very peaceful. So we actually were supposed to have finished the rapture by now. But then um, yeah, we'll, it'll just have to wait till after the break. So when we co come back from the break, then we will talk about the rapture and the rest of it. Uh, so um, because we are kind of dismissing a little uh, early, can we also get back a little early, maybe at three minutes to 10? OK, so everyone can log back in three minutes to 10. Uh, Thank <laughs> you.